Magadan unites the Russian Far East. Word has traveled down from the quiet tundras of the Russian Far East, a frontier long abandoned by any national authority for decades. A new contender for power now arises there. Perhaps against all odds, Mikhail Makovsky, the leader of the rebellious branch of the Russian Fascist Party, based in the port of the city of Magadan, has established himself as the premier authority in the Far Eastern region. A pragmatic fascist of some repute, Makovsky and his allies first split from the original party in armor due to Rodzewski's excesses and support for the Nazis during the Great Patriotic War. Now the rest of the world waits in bated breath to see how much further the, the, this old Russian fascist can go. The winds of fate blew Russia to the Reds once upon a time, and now that tide may reverse its course. A strange development. The Charter of Magadan. Hitlin watched as Makovsky and the rest of the cabinet took their seats at a round table on the highest floor of the RFP building. He followed them, sitting right beside Makovsky. A male ambassador lifted to the position of the right-hand man. Gentlemen, I come to you here today with a bold proposal. As per the recommendations from our dear friend Nikolai Pitlin, who has proposed a radical change, a shift that would perhaps transform the very nature of the party. I understand that many of us here, including me, Pitlin, Pavlov, and many others have served the cause of Russia ever since the creation of the party in Harbin. However, the times have changed. The party needs forgive me for the right expression, to move on with the times. I propose to do away with the affectations of the past, to, to escape the shadow of Rodzewski. We shall sign the Charter of Magadan. Pitlin, our dear friend, his, his hands grasp Pitlin's shoulders, has kindly written a new constitution for us. I am sure that all of you have read it. Now, I propose that from today henceforth, the Russian Fascist Party is no more. It is now the National Labour Party of Russia. He paused, gorging out every man there for their worth. All in favour say aye. There was no dissent. Aye. The Fascism Party will now be called the Ruskaya Nash... Okay, um... The National Labour Party. Yeah, that's, that's all you have to know. We now have a new focus tree. And like every single, almost every single other uh, regional warlords, you have a, uh, a political tree, an economic tree, a military tree, and a foreign policy tree. So we will start by... Hmm, I think we're going to start with the... Uh, with the political tree, right? Uh, First of all, so we will do political, and then our economic tree, and then our military tree, and we'll save foreign policy for last. So we will start from the tiger to the seas. Gone were the days of old, the failures of the czarists, the communists, and yes, even the failures of fascism. It would never be enough. Magadan had been a poor home for immigrants who had fled there, hoping for a new place, a new home, a new Russia. And now, a step had been taken towards this new dream. Of course, he still had work to do, control had to be solidified, the Americans had to be state stated, and the future had to be secured, but his dream kept coming back to him, a free Russia, different than all that had come before, a new place where everything was better, everything was calmer, a place Russians could truly call home, no matter the price that it would come in making. A new hopeful land, peace through order, order through strength, this was the maxim they needed strong, firm, uncompromising. And despite all his glances to the forms on his desk, he couldn't get over the thoughts dancing in his head. The future waits for no one. Back to work. Europe is not looking that good at all. Um, yeah, so... This, this may be a problem. Let's just hope that uh, Goring's AI is as stupid as it was before. Or else... Well, all of Russia is gonna, is gonna suffer. But on the bright side is, we've got democracy returning to Italy and democracy returning to England, which is nice. Factionalism rears its head. The recent party congress has triggered a phenomenon previously unheard of in Megadon's halls of power, the formation of factions. As part of Makovsky's slogan reforms to the political system, opportunities to express dissent within the National Labour Party have grown. Makovsky's personal faction, the so-called Labourists, remains the largest bloc, and, 
an eclectic mix of moderate fascists, national conservatives, and personal loyalists to the boss. This is the status quo wing of the party, advocating a very slow, moderated political reform under the umbrella of a single party state. In many ways, reform only generates more appetite for reform, and this certainly applies to in Siberia just as anywhere else. Protesting single party rule, Nikolai Petlin has formed his own reformist wing of the party, one, compo one composed of advocates for a genuinely democratic system. This new era signals unprecedented pluralism as well as unprecedented conflict within the party. Only time will tell if the SNR is significantly impacted by the decision. New risks reveal themselves. So as you can see, we've got a massive change in our political pie chart here. And we now have um, basically a political infighting between the reformers and the conservatives. So we've got the laborers led by the boss and the reformers led by our foreign minister, Nikolai Pitlin. And I'm not going to be the one deciding uh, which path I'm going to go to because there's a gimmick that I will show you guys later that I've already used in the previous video that will decide this. That gimmick is the wheel. Now, once I spin the wheel, it will either go to idealism or pragmatism. Pragmatism stands for the laborist, aka uh, Makovsky's wing, and idealism stands for the reformist wing, which is aka, it's basically just it's Pitlin's group. And, um, well, because we have three branches of the focus uh, tree, we're going to just spin the wheel three times, and depending on if we get the reformers or the parameters root, we will just uh, follow down one or the other. So I will not spin the wheel for every single choice. I've just realized this 1%. Um, that's pretty weird. Alright, we're now going to spin the wheel three times and decide uh, which one we're going to do. So idealism or parameterism. So the first spin goes to idealism. <laughs> The second spin goes to pragmatism, and the third spin goes to pragmatism. So we will do idealism, pragmatism, and pragmatism. So, um, yeah, I'm guessing this is going to be a Mikowski playthrough. Also, I should probably let you guys know that we have a new set of decisions that we can do to either boost the reformist or the laborist wing of our party, and well, because. Uh, the view has already decided that we're going to be playing a Mankowski playthrough. We're just going to be doing the laborist decisions from now on. The Grand Sober Within his office in Magadan, Nikolai Petlin allowed himself a small smile. For the first time in years, he could reasonably say that he was hopeful for the future. After months of careful maneuvering, he had convinced Mankowski to allow a primitive legislative body to be formed. The Grand Sober was barely worth the name, but it was a start. The Vos was still the ultimate power in Magadan, as he was not about to give up more than a token influence over the nation. In fact, getting Makovsky to relinquish even what little power that was given to the Sober was almost miraculous in and of itself. But even so, a victory has been scored for the people of Russia, as minor as it was. One step at a time. Um, excuse me? Who cares about Afghanistan? Oh, terrific timing. Alright, it's time to move on to the pragmatist uh, branches of our focus tree. So we'll do Return to Harbin, and then the Manifesto of National Labour, then the Long Arm of the SIA, and the Letter of Law. A few radio. Many laborers have called for the radical reform of the radio and the replacement of the host, who have quickly grown on the people to the surprise of everyone except perhaps Sergei. This, this would be done to ensure the loyalty of the radio to the state and make it a useful tool for spreading fascist truth. Of course, as neither Sergei nor Vasily are, very, are thought of very highly by the laborists, with some whispering that the feeling is neutral, they would be, they would probably have to be disposed of. The reformers, on the other hand, have called for the host to remain due to their popularity and the maintenance of their freedom and their content for the radio to live up its name. All that remains is for the final decision to be made. Well, because we're doing a pragmatic playthrough, we will do the labor with option. There is no freedom without loyalty. Free in name only. Two gunshots rang out in the background. After pausing a moment, the new host decided to ignore it, but he did not have to comment on it for Galina to know who had been killed. I will discuss the news in just a moment, but first, join me in pledging allegiance to our righteous boss, Mikoski. Oh, Mikoski, boss of all Russians. 
bring glory to Lunina couldn't stand up to listen to another word and shut off off the radio. Her parents looked up at her with concern but made no attempt to turn the radio back on. There was no need. It, it was simple to figure out what the rest of the show would consist of. The boss killed the radio star. We can now finally remove the administrative strain in our state with the enduring rule of the people. We now have a decision to seize the traders and due to the laborers faction as being the most influential faction in our political pie chart as you can see. So we will now seize the traders and we will get the toiling of the bed. Pit Lin said he had already heard the doors slamming, the engines roaring like hellhounds off to drag him down to his final judgment, and the brutes of soldiers slamming the ground as they made their way up to the, his driveway. He knew what was coming. He stood up, awaiting the three armed men rushing up the staircase and into his study. As he raised his hands in a gesture of surrender, suddenly his breath was stolen from him as the prime for combat soldier at the front tackled him at the waist. The shackles were snapped onto his wrist as the charges were read. Treason, a believable charge, an expected charge. It still stung to hear that all of his efforts to improve his country had earned him the title of traitor. The traitor was dragged out into the street. His neighbors stayed indoors as not to incur the wrath of the boss. Instead, they watched through their blinds as Pitling was thrown into the back of an unarmed and unmarked truck. It sped off down the street, never to return to his place again. Through his blistering headache, Pitling only had one thought. God save us all. And we now remove Pitling as our foreign minister and replace them with Igor something. Alright, like I said before, we will now start with our economic tree and form the recovery commission. The phone rang, mentioning other, another name, one more eliminated, 20 to go. He cursed himself for underestimating P.E. That backstabber had nearly brought the boss down for. Luckily, the fool didn't have enough support for his idiotic coup. Still, this was a lesson to be learned for the future. He would never give away power, no one could be trusted, and most of all, he would never agree to sign off reforms that would weaken the, his leadership over the over again. Only he, the boss, could bring Russia to greatness. Only he could succeed in the crusade against the traitors and the Germans. Long live the boss. By the way, if you're wondering who the contenders are for Russia, it's um, the Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia led by Andrei Vazov, at least for now. We've got the West Siberian Republic led by Boris Yeltsin. And we've got this um, mess over here. You know, I was really hoping for a challenge, but I guess I guess not because each of these guys they may have a few divisions. They they can't really send up to my army because they're all split up. Oh God, Goring has started war plan A, and I can only hope for them to fail at invading Norway, considering they haven't got uh, their Kriegsmarine back. So I just have to sit and wait. If they if they do somehow beat Norway and England, then. Then it's not gonna be good. With this last focus, we can now complete our economic tree from the ashes. And we gain the national spirit from the ashes, which grants us 10% resource gain efficiency and 10% extra construction speed and 5% extra production efficiency growth. Very nice indeed. Alright, it's time to move on to our military tree and we will do the National Republican Armed Forces. This is great! But this is also disappointing at the same time because I actually wanted a Germany, uh, a strong Germany that Russia can face off and absolutely get obliter and absolutely obliterate. So now I now it would just be a pointless and emotionless victory, I'm afraid. So uh, I don't know. I would have preferred Goring not winning the civil war. Finally, we got better industrial equipment. I mean, we desperately needed this. Look at. Our, lo our level, rudimentary manufacturing lines. Thank you. Now, if only we could get our poverty in uh, together. I really want to get this lower now because I mean, we, we, we've been at 50 to 80 percent from the beginning, and we're still at 50 to 80 percent. So, Red Nikki, your voice is calling you to a higher purpose. Our victory over the traitors, subversives, and lunatics is the first step towards a triumph over the Hun. With your help, we shall celebrate New Year's in Moscow. With your help, we shall celebrate Christmas in Kiev. And with your help, the world will stand in awe of Russia's majesty once more. Enlist 
with the National Republican Army today and our motherland will be united forever. Okay, now we can reorganize the budgets of our military and we are only going to do these three focuses. We'll open the Cheetah Military Academy, the National Republican Air Force, and expand the airfields. Because, well, there's no point in getting in and fixing the Navy and this uh, focus is not worth 25 days. We'd rather spend the 25 days on our foreign policy tree. If we have time, we might. I'm, I will. I will bother finishing this. But uh, right now, I don't really care. So we're now going to focus on our foreign policy, and we will now do opportunities abroad. The two things I want to focus on are the left and center branch, because the third branch it's it's not really it's not really useful for us. Oh, great. Um, I'm kind of lacking behind in terms of uh, divisions against uh, Yeltsin over here, and that that may be a problem. But I have faith in my tank division tactics. All right, now it's time to do to the city upon a hill. Today, Mikhail Makovsky made a very public announcement over the radio that he will be personally traveling to the infamous city upon a hill, Washington D.C., the National Republic, and the world. Asia primary prospects involve the support or sponsorship of anti-Japanese organization in Manchuria and elsewhere. North America primary outreach likely towards the U.S., leveraging previous connections established by the state. South America prospects remains limited at the current time, of course. Europe prospects remain limited at the current time as a result of the overwhelming German influence. Uh, not anymore, I'd say. Africa. Prospects remain limited at current time. Oh, I wonder why. Oceania, Oceania. Australia and New Zealand considered highly unlikely prospects only to share interest regarding Japanese influence. Outreach encouraged. The Americans reject our offer. Well, we should have expected this. Damn you, Bennett. <sighs> Due to our um setbacks we can only do on our own two feet well this is kind of depressing the world beckons we've now completed our foreign policy tree and all that remains is the reunification of siberia all right it is now 1969 and we can now prepare for war against these uh, siberian communist warlords like last episode when i declared the war i will speed up the video and um, just sweep through our enemies. And that was the reunification of Siberia. So we can now do Siberian reunification. And we can now exit influence over Kazakhstan. But that is for next episode. Uh, hopefully we'll finish up uniting uh, Russia. And maybe we could even invade the Germans. And finish up everything next episode. But that remains to be seen. So... I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And comment down if you have any suggestions in the future. Thank you very much.